the, the medical evidence in this case was very clear and still remains very clear that um, Greville Janner will not be fit to stand trial. He's not been fit to be interviewed by the police, so he hasn't been. Um, he will not be able to go through a trial process. At the end of the day, it would have to be a fitness to plead. Ordinarily, and where we're really keen to make sure and we do go through fitness to plead um, proceedings, is where at the end of the day, someone's still a threat to the public, there's still damage, and therefore we need a hospital order or a supervision order. That wasn't the case here, so it was going to be an absolute discharge, and no penalty, no conviction, and there still is unlikely to be, even though we're prosecuting now. I felt that giving evidence to the inquiry in a fully public um, arena allowed the victims to tell their story. Um, that decision, well, it does, but it's, it's just not the same thing, is it? Well, that it's, is exactly what has happened, and that's the decision that's now been reached, which is now why we are prosecuting the case. Do you still think that your original decision was the right decision? The decision's gone through the process of the VRR, the Victims' Right to Review. Um, I encourage the victims to go through that. That found that my decision was wrong and that we should prosecute, and I've entirely accepted that and endorse it. What do you say to those people who would say, well, look, this was... Um, you, know, you can say, yes, it was a finely balanced decision, but actually it was a real error of judgment in terms of just being aware of the times we live in and what is and what isn't in the public interest. And as a result of that, Alison Saunders should resign. Um, it's a re it was a very finely balanced decision. And my concern was not just about making sure we had the evidence, which we did, but making sure that we also took into account what the complainants wanted, hence why I contacted the inquiry. Um, I don't think it's a decision that I should resign over. It's one that I took very carefully and with the victims at the heart of that. That's why we talked about the victim's right to review and I encouraged them to do that. And that's where we are today. Did you take and agree with the advice that was given to you by your own uh, principal legal advisor, Neil Moore, uh, when he looked at this case? Um, I made my own decision. It was my decision. Um, there were lots of people who... So you, you disagreed with him? I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are lots of people well, who profit Did you device. agree with him or did you disagree? It doesn't actually matter because it was my decision at the end of the day and there were lots of things that I took into account. So it was my decision at the end of the day to decide to prosecute and it's my decision that has been reviewed and now has been overturned. Well, that's true, but it will matter to some people because they will want to know whether you uh, listen to the principal legal advisor that this organisation employs internally to give you advice on these big cases. Um, he played no part in the decision making, it was my decision alone. Did you take advice at that point from independent external counsel? Um, there had been earlier advice from um, external counsel, yes. And did you agree with that advice? Did you go along with that advice or did you disagree with it? Um, I agreed with part of it around the evidential part. I did not agree with the public interest part. So it sounds to me as though this was absolutely, as you say, it was your decision. You were advised uh, by your own principal legal advisor internally. You were advised uh, by an independent legal advisor from outside the CPS. Uh, and, and you disagreed with some of what they had to say. Um, some of, some of, it really doesn't matter because it was my decision and it's my decision that's been reviewed. So the basis on which I did it was looking at the evidence that was before me, looking at all the different um, factors that you take into account in relation to public interest, which will be things like what did the victims want, what was the likely outcome, what was going to happen at court, um, the severity of the allegations. Um, and as I've said, I found it a really difficult decision. For me, it was very finely balanced. Um, but I decided not to proceed at that time. That decision has been reviewed and we have now changed that decision so we are prosecuting. That's Alison Saunders, the uh, Director of Public Prosecutions, talking to uh, Clive Coleman on the news that her original decision not to prosecute the former Labour peer, Lord Janner, on historical child sexual offences has been overturned by uh, an independent right to review system. Last month, I spoke to one of Lord Janna's alleged victims, who we called David and whose identity we're protecting. His case was not one of those being considered by Alison Saunders for potential prosecution. David told me why he wanted a trial of the facts. The reason she said it wasn't in the public interest is because four medical experts said he got severe dementia, so he wasn't fit to plead, but that's one person's decision, OK, she's got lawyers around her, but that's one person's decision that's very difficult to overturn. If it would have gone to a 
into the ju judicial system to a judge, then uh, he could have done a trial of facts where the facts are laid, laid before the courts and charges are brought and then a decision is made whether he is unfit you know and there's various criteria so in the public interest yes he's not going to do it again because he's got dementia so he's no risk to the public but the, the better there's more than one person involved in this there's all the victims survivors families friends there's a lot more than one person so one person saying he's unfit to plead because of his dementia but the, the victims have never got their say in court well, let's talk now to Liz Ducks, who is a lawyer representing some of Lord Janus' alleged victims, and also to Simon Danchuk, who's the Labour MP for Rochdale, who's also been campaigning for alleged victims. Uh, welcome, both of you. Uh, Liz Ducks, first of all, how will your clients re react to this official announcement? Well, they're absolutely delighted. Uh, what they, This is all they ever wanted, was to be heard in court, for facts to be established. They had begun to lose all faith uh, in the British legal system, and this has done much to restore that. They feel that they've been totally vindicated, uh, that the victim's right to review has been dealt with uh, independently uh, and they're absolutely thrilled at the outcome. What does a trial of facts mean for them? It means that, don't forget, these are people that gave their statement sometimes many, many years ago. All they've ever wanted is for the right to stand up in court, for their evidence to be heard, cross-examined, uh, and for facts to be established. Uh, and they've been denied that right for so long now that this is what's so vital to them, that they are listened to and, and believed and that facts are public. Well, it is a trial of the facts. Lord Janner, as you know, denies all the allegations. Uh, let me ask you for your reaction to the fact that the Director of Public Prosecutions, Alison Saunders, her decision has been overturned, uh, will not be considering her position, will not be resigning, she says. Uh I appreciate there's lots of debate about that uh, today. It clearly was a difficult legal decision. What she misjudged completely uh, was the public uh, need for there to be transparency, for there to be faith in the British legal system, for this evidence regarding his fitness to be plead to be aired uh, in public so people, uh, and particularly an independent judge, could make that decision. Uh, and that's what um, you know she misjudged, and that's why the victim's right to review is so important for the first time in British legal history, victims have been regarded uh, as very important to the uh, uh, system and not just there as witnesses. So it's, it's the system working as it should? It is, and it's you know a system that is relatively new. Uh, and you know credit to her for saying that she will abide by the decision of, of the independent reviewer. She has to. That's in that's in the scheme, uh, and um, that is what the my clients were so worried about that this wouldn't be independent but it clearly has been. Mm. Simon Danchuk, uh, should the Director of Public Prosecutions resign? Yes, I think she should. I think Alison Saunders has brought the criminal justice system into disrepute, and I don't say that lightly. This follows on from a number of poor decisions by Alison Saunders, one particular case in, re in relation to FGM, but also in relation to another decision around journalists. In regard to Lord Janner, her initial decision, uh, real concerns there. The timing was all wrong. It took her a long time to make the decision. Uh, she then met, announced the decision during PERDA when Parliament wasn't sitting. Sitting, even though there was a lot of public interest in this, she could have done it while Parliament was sitting. There were there were problems around conflicts of interest, whether she'd sat in chambers uh, with Lord Janner, whether one of her advisers was close to Lord Janner's, uh, one of Lord Janner's sons. But most of all, the issue that it was just a cold decision. It didn't take into account uh, the uh, alleged victims in this case. Uh, there was a lot of public interest in it and she failed to accept that. She's really isn't, dented. Isn't, isn't that what people want from a director of public prosecutions? A, a, an objective decision? A clear, focused look at all the evidence, mm. and you come to that decision independently. 
Yes, absolutely, but it appears that she's ignored a lot of the advice that she was given and this, uh, this decision today actually shows that she got it wrong and she's really dented public confidence in the criminal justice system and what the public wants is somebody at the head of the Crown Prosecution Service who is going to do the right thing, who's going to reach the right decision and as I've just shown, she's continually reaching the wrong decisions and, and for those reasons, she needs to move on. But the the right of review, the victim's right of review, has been brought in on her watch. It, yes. it, it could be argued it's the system working as she intended. Well, you could argue that, and there's probably a need for a debate about whether that should be statutory, whether we have to rely on the Director of Public Prosecutions to allow uh, that review to take place or whether uh, victims have a right to it uh, automatically. You could argue that, but the point is that there's been a, co a catalogue of errors by Alison Saunders. She's dented the uh, confidence in the criminal justice system. I think she's actually brought it into disrepute. I don't think she's fit for the job. Uh, Liz Ducks, do you think confidence in the criminal justice system has been damaged by the way she's dealt with this case? Uh, I, I think it was severely damaged uh, in the decision not to prosecute. There, there are all these rumours about conspiracies and cover-ups, and that's why she did misjudge this situation. The public need to have confidence that there isn't this going on. Uh, they needed to have this decision uh, made by a judge uh, and by a jury, uh, and that's where the misjudgment came. Also, what does... Does, does this overturning of the decision restore confidence, then? I hope it does. I hope it does. Uh, and... Um, and I, and I hope that now uh, victims feel that they are much more empowered in the criminal justice system, that their wishes are going to be taken into account much more, and that's incredibly important. Thank you very much for talking to us. Liz Ducks, who represents some of Lord Janus' alleged victims. Simon Danchuk, thank you for your time. Uh, Labour MP for Rochdale, who's also been campaigning for alleged victims.